Well, I want to thank everybody for taking the time uh, to come this evening uh, to our second annual budget forum. Uh, this is uh, uh, when I took office last year. Um, we, you know, pretty immediately started work on the 2017 budget. And um, before we got too far into the process, I said to myself, I can do all of this work and I can create a budget, um, but in the end, um, it's just my ideas and, and, and my budget. I, why not we have the, the community get involved before I actually write the budget? Uh, maybe we can use some of their ideas and their suggestions and their thoughts um, before we actually spend all of this time crafting um, this uh, 150, 200 page book. Uh, let's uh, get the community involved. And so that's what we did last year and it went really well and I'm really excited to be able to have our uh, second annual budget forum. Um, for folks who, um, you know, are, uh, I'll, I'll kind of walk through a little bit about what we're going to do this evening and, and why it's so important. Uh, so in just a few minutes, um, our comptroller, uh, John Tui, is going to come up and give us a, an overview of, of really what the budget is all about um, and, and what makes up the budget and, and why we have this budget um, that we do each and every year. Um, and then we're going to have an opportunity to do what I think is kind of the best part of the evening, no offense, John, um, but to actually break up into groups um, and be able to interact with all of our department heads. And uh, at the end, I'll come back and I'll, we'll go over how that's going to work. Um, for me, you know, managing a, a $41.5 million budget is not easy. Um, it's one that takes a, a really committed team of people and individuals. Um, and I believe really strongly that taxpayers are a part of that team um, because you're the funders. Um, you know, we uh, uh, work really hard each and every year uh, to develop a list of priorities and projects and programs that we feel will best meet the needs of the taxpayer. And uh, Without your input, your advice, uh, your suggestions, and your thoughts, um, you know, we can't do that very well uh, because in the end we won't end up meeting your needs and we'll have spent a whole lot of money um, not meeting your needs. And we don't want to do that. And so um, with that said, um, I'm really excited about tonight. I hope that you know, we're able to um, grab a lot of feedback um, from you. and. Uh, as you're sitting here tonight and as you're thinking um, about some different thoughts and suggestions, um, tonight is not the only night. Um, we actually have every night um, for the next couple of weeks. Um, you'll actually be able to go um, online or take our paper version um, of a survey uh, where you can go and answer some questions um, related to um, what you think priorities um, are um, uh, for the city and, and for you personally and for your family. And we think that that's going to really help us um, shape the budget. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to turn it over uh, to our comptroller, um, who I'm really lucky to be able to have working for us and who I believe does an extremely good job and, uh, again, not an easy process uh, to, to work with all of my staff uh, through the next uh, month. So, John. Thanks for the introduction. I'm going to try to do this a little informally. What I'm not going to do tonight is walk you through the nuts and bolts of the mechanics of the budget. Um, the purpose of this is really to fill the community in with the challenges and issues that the city deals with every year in developing our budget. Uh, both myself, the departments, the mayor, the common council. Uh, a lot of issues that are recurring, some new issues pop up from year to year. So I want to walk through some of those mechanics. Uh, for everyone's information, a copy of the budget, the last year's budget is available online city website can you hear me okay sorry I'm not close enough a uh, copy of the budget is available on the city website under departments comptroller's office reports I believe budgets and reports but it's there um, also be available after this session for questions etc so these are what we put together for the key challenges for 2018 and beyond some of these are similar to what if you were here last year you saw last year some are new um, I'll just go down the list not spending a lot of time on any one of these in particular we'll get into a little more detail later on uh, the first item is a lack of expansion in the tax base uh, if you're in I might have to switch my position here I'm sorry currently the assessed the assessed values in the city of Kingston are still at pre-recession levels we had a slight pickup in the, the assessments from 2017 budget to the 2018 budget. However, it's still slight and modest increases. The importance of this is A, it's relief in the tax cap. 
the actual assessed values and the, the tax base growth factor is a portion of the tax cap. And the relevance there is that it allows the city to spread costs, fixed costs, over a wider tax base. And without that growth, it, it dampens the, uh, the city's ability to stay within the cap. Uh, going down the line, curb growth and expenditures while maintaining and improving existing services. I think that one's self-explanatory. Identifying and implementing new efficiencies and delivering services to the public. This is something that we work on every year. Uh, we ask our departments to bring innovative ideas to our budget meetings, which are actually are starting this week. Uh, this week we have a whole slew of budget meetings with department heads. We'll be doing it again next week. Uh, and these are things that we need. We need new efficiencies. The mayor brings them, department heads bring them uh, to continue to control costs. Personnel contracts with the city's three bargaining units expired 12-31-16. So we have three contracts that are expired. We're working on new contracts. Unfunded mandates. Uh, there's a lot of state laws and regulations that we have to follow where I'll get into that in a little more detail in a few minutes. Continued infrastructure needs. As you know, there's been a lot of projects ongoing at City of Kingston. Washington Avenue Tunnel was one last year. We currently have two major projects going down, going on at the treatment plant, City, City of Kingston's treatment plant. Greenkill Avenue Bridge over Broadway was just recently finished. Uh, at some point here, we'll be tackling the firehouse, the Midtown uh, firehouse. Aside from sales tax, there's little growth in revenues not generated directly from the public. And we're talking about are things other than property tax, other than user fees, building permits, parking, it's a hot topic. The areas that are not part of that, there's really little growth. Actually, when we get into a, a slide later on, you'll see federal aid, state aid, we're actually down on those items from five years ago. Not as only they're not growth, it's actually declined. Uh, putting pressure on the city to raise revenues in other ways. Uh, franchise taxes, which is, you know, your Spectrum bill, your Time Warner bill, there's a small portion of that tax that goes to the city. The gross receipts tax is a utility tax. These items are all basically flat and court fines, et cetera. And then obviously with all these items that we've discussed, the difficulty is staying in compliance with the New York State quote unquote 2% tax cap. I mentioned the, the tax-based growth factor. This is essentially the, based on the assessed, increase in the assessed, well, it's off a little bit here. Talks about the a growth factor providing for relief based upon physical and quantity increases in taxable property values. This is basically the development that's go, gone on in the city of Kings for the last five years. Uh, you'll see in, 2014, we're under 0.2% of a tax base growth factor. We peaked out um, as high as 1%. We're under 0.4 now, but there's no year where it's been particularly strong. And this is not unique to the city of Kingston. This is Ulster County, New York State as a whole is, is uh, facing the same type of problem. New York State property tax cap. Once again, under the cap, municipalities face pressure to find innovative methods to reduce expenditures and find alternative revenue sources on an annual basis. A lack of unfunded mandate relief hinders this effort. And without new revenue sources or using additional reserves, the city spending will be limited to an approximate 1.45% increase in 2018. So that's what the city has to work with in our budget for next year. mentioned the challenge of expired collective bargaining agreements. All three agreements expired December 31st. We're currently in negotiation for, with the unions with, for successor agreements. It's important to note, modifications to these agreements are subject to collective bargaining with the respective unions and may not be unilaterally modified by either party. Example, compensation issues, health insurance provisions, other matters covered by the collective bargaining agreement. We often hear comment from interested parties about, you know, the, the union contracts, you know, change this, change that. Uh, we can't unilaterally do that. Many times we'll agree with your comments, but these are all things that have to be collectively bargained with our unions. 
state mandates. Uh, there, I listed a, a website. If you're interested, you can take a look at uh, it was a NICOM project, which is a New York Conference of Mayors. It's a lobbying group um, that works with New York State municipalities. It's called www.stopthetaxshift.org. Uh, there's a lot of passed down state mandates to the city, county, town, village level that restricts the way we can operate. Um, give one example, you know, we can't bill for police services. And that's one of hundreds of mandates that uh, municipalities have to deal with. So when we talk about how can we cut expenditures, how can we raise revenues, we're limited in a lot of ways by state law and how we can do that. Infrastructure challenges. I mentioned the, the three projects, the Washington, Ave Washington Avenue tunnel grout removal and sanitary sewer lining, 1.25 million currently. This is on top of the uh, $7 million plus project that we just wrapped up up there. Uh, we also have, as I mentioned, two large wastewater treatment plant projects going, ongoing, and then we just finished the Green Kill Avenue bridge construction project. While there's grant funding in many of these projects, there's still a, a burden to the city. And the last paragraph talks about how the city's capital debt has increased $3 million in five years. And just like your personal checkbook, when you, you start borrowing money, it comes time to pay the piper. So we have to find a way to, to pay down that debt. Uh, our bond rating is excellent. It's double A minus. It's up two levels from when I started here 10 years ago. Our interest rates are fine. However, you still have principal to pay. You still have to pay your debt back, and it's, uh, it is a burden. Property tax, where your taxes go. This is kind of like a 5,000 foot overview. Um, a lot of people don't really sit and analyze their tax bills. They know they get a, one bill in, the, in this January, they get a bill later in the year. They don't necessarily think about where the money is going to. This is a breakdown of your residential and commercial bills. And this is a total of both your bills that you get. And this is representative. It's not true of, of every instance, but in general, your city is, on a residential property, roughly 28% of your total tax is paid. So, you know, if you have a $10,000 total tax bill, you're paying the city about $2,800. 5,900 going to the school, 1,200 going to the county, and the city library coming at a very modest, uh, was that 10 bucks? Am I doing the right math? 100 bucks? And then there's a slightly different composition for the commercial. Keeping in mind that the, the homestead, non-homestead, which is a whole other issue we could spend a lot of time on, but there's a homestead, non-homestead tax rate in the city the school district uses as well. The county doesn't use it, so that's why the county portion of taxes for the commercial properties is, is a little bit lower. Use an example of a $150,000 assessed value residence just to show you as an example, where your tax money are, is going. What departments are you funding? Not everyone, they, you see your tax bill, you know the city's a part of it. What departments and programs are you actually funding? Uh, the vast majority of it is, is public safety. You have a, a significant component that is the public works department. You have general government, which is essentially city hall. Uh, all the functions are contained within this building. Recreation department and it, there's some smaller blocks of different line items there. Debt service, almost $100 of your $1,500 city tax is just, that's principal and interest on our borrowings. Just broken down a different way, this pie just represents, it's 100% of the city budget without any credit to revenues particular departments because a lot of the general revenues don't get allocated to departments but this is a breakdown of the spending so you know we hear well let's cut spending this is this is where the spending is you know police 27 percent fire 21 percent can everyone see this okay is that our um, general government 10 percent contingency which is kind of a a holding tank account that gets used during the year, insurance, 4%. The rec department, 
surprisingly only 5%. I mean, that, internally, it's something that we've looked at and just looks low. And that, that number has actually shrank over the years. It seems to be the one department that's been hit year after year, but we only spend 5% of our budget on recreation. Spun a different way, taking the total budget and breaking out into different natural categories, you'll see that if you add the two largest sections of the pie together, we actually spend over 75% of our budget on personnel related costs. And once again, these are all subject to collective bargaining. Uh, not all of it, but the vast majority of it is select, uh, subject to collective bargaining. There are a handful of employees who are not part of the bargaining units. Uh, debt services, 6%. Capital outlay, which is, this is the, the equipment that we fund within the budget that we're not borrowing for. At one point, there, we, that little 0.2% was a little bit higher. We've been forced to borrow for more and more equipment rather than funding it through general operations, through budgetary constraint. And contractual expenses, which is essentially everything else under the sun. This is your utilities, this is in, uh, general insurance, this is office supplies, it's uh, tipping fees at the landfill. And when we bring the trash, we have to pay the, to dispose of it. It all goes there, 17.5%. So that's outside of collective bargaining and debt. And that's really what we have to, that's the piece of the pie that we work with, that's 17.5%. Thought this would be helpful. This is a, a five-year trend in spending for the city. Personal services, salaries, this is, this is all sa salary categories. This is all sorts of uh, it's regular pay, part-time pay, seasonal pay, overtime. On a five-year basis, the average increase is under 2%. It's around 1.7%. Uh, the employee benefits, uh, it's over 35 That's the, the highest piece. The increase is there. The contractual expense, the piece of the pie that I mentioned on the last slide that's everything else under the sun, it's the utilities, it's uh, all the, not discretionary items, but it's the non-personnel and debt items. The increase has been under 2.5%, and the city's done a good job at keeping, holding the line on that line. And debt service and transfers, that's essentially a result of the capital needs of the city. And we have refunded every debt issuance prior to 2010 to get better rates like you would at your own house. You know, you have a mortgage, you refinance it. We've, we've done what we can with the debt. There's not much left to do um, other than to try to find ways to creatively pay for new capital projects. This is a breakdown of the salary budget. Uh, salary being one of the biggest pieces of pie, 17 million of a $40 million budget. Sorry, that's a little blurry. Uh, public, public safety is well over half of the pie. You have public works coming at 18%, general government's 12%, and recreation 6%. Employee benefits budget. Thanks, Megan. We used to talk about benefits, there's really two main benefits. It's medical insurance, which includes hospital, uh, dental, optical, and New York State retirement system, which, you know, the medical insurance is governed under the bargaining contracts. State retirement system is mandated by the state. Social Security, obviously, is mandated by the federal government. And then you have the other column or other section, which is 2%. That's every other small benefit, whether it's a, a boot allowance, a uniform allowance, things like that. We had talked about the contractual expenses that every other expense category. This is a, a breakdown of those expenses. And we look at, all right, how, how, do we, how do we cut these expenses? How do we attack these items? Uh, and you start digging into it. You know, the first item is insurance and claims. Uh, the insurance there is workers' comp, and it's general liability insurance. And from there, you have utilities, uh, refuse tipping fees. That's the, the cost to, for disposing the refuse. And you go down the line, materials and supplies, contracted service, property maintenance. All those items are relatively minor 
and they've been held pretty consistent over the years. What are the sources of city revenue besides property tax? I tried to color coordinate these items. Uh, let me just summarize. You have a $41.4 million revenue budget for, this is 2017. I color coordinated different categories to show some similarities. Uh, the, the yellow highlighted is you have state aid and you have federal aid up there. As I mentioned before, those are both down from five years ago. The items in red, other non-property taxes, which is gross receipts tax, franchise tax, um, things like that, fines, penalties, and interest, reimburse costs where we actually bill outside parties for our expenses, and sales tax are really items that are covered by agreement or whether it's local ordinance, local law, state law, there's not a lot of discretion. Obviously, the sales tax, as many of you know, we have an agreement with Ulster County on that. Uh, we're fortunate enough that the sales tax has done well as of late, but outside of the sales tax, there's not a lot of room for growth in the other items. They're, they're relatively fixed amounts. So when we're sitting down working on the budget, whether it's myself, the mayor, the council, the departments, you know, we, we tend to spend more time on the items that are highlighted in orange. You know, the, the items that are not always popular to look at. And you have the, the property tax, which is the default, which you're trying to keep to a minimum. But what you have to get there is you have the appropriated fund balance, which is, uh, that's basically using our reserves to offset tax increases. And then you have user charges, fees, and other revenue. Um, that's parking. It's building department fees. It's any fee that you would pay to a department. That's internally sourced revenue. That's revenue that's derived from the general public. And you can see even a small increase there is not, not a lot of money in terms of the overall scale of the budget. I mean, if you increase that 10%, you're at, it's what, $117,000 on a $41 million budget. I mean, you're, you're by far your two biggest items here, you're limited. You have, a, you have a tax cap on the real property taxes, and we have an agreement on sales tax. State aid, we have zero control over. The vast majority of that comes from uh, a state program called Aid to Municipalities. I think it's the sixth year in a row now we've been held at the same dollar amount, uh, and a very small portion of state grants. Uh, state grants are for capital purposes, wouldn't be included in here. This is just state operating grants, and there's been little growth in those items. So, questions for consideration. What are your budget priorities for the city? Reducing property taxes, maintenance of existing services, improvement of existing services or offering of new services. What services, programs, and functions of city government do you consider high priorities for the future? What ideas do you have to improve the quality or cost efficiency of city services, programs, and functions? Last year, the tax levy was kept flat, requiring no increase in taxes. However, there is an increase in service fees in areas such as parking, parks and rec, public works. Probably a lot of areas that the public really, um, minor fees, but they're, nonetheless, there are user fees throughout the city budget. Are you supportive? of the shift of the tax increases to, towards those fees? If not, what alternative would you recommend? How else do you think the city can minimize any increase in the 2018 tax levy? I can assure you that we're thinking about it internally, but we highly value the public input on this. And in what areas, if any, do you think the city should reduce spending and how do we do it in light of some of the things that we just went over? And in what areas, if any, do you think the city should increase spending and how? You know, perhaps there's areas that we're not spending enough on. I touched on recreation. That's just a personal thing for me. But every taxpayer and every interested party has a, a particular area that they may want to see the city do more with. So these are all opportunities uh, that you can put, give your input tonight. I guess I'll turn it back over to, is it Megan or Mayor? So 
I just wanted to uh, go over um, how the rest of the evening is going to work. Um, we have a variety of tables uh, set up across the room. Um, I'll go over them briefly and also try to introduce you to some um, of the department uh, staff that's here tonight um, from each of those categories uh, to be able to, to help. Um, what I want you to do um, is that this is a great opportunity for, for residents and citizens uh, to um, interact um, with my department heads. I want you to be able to ask them what they do, how they do it, um, and probe if you need to to figure out, um, you know, so that you can learn more um, and so that you can ask them questions that can help us, you know, figure out um, better ways and more efficient ways to run city government and to be able to, to deal with this. This is obviously, um, it's complicated and as you can see that there is no easy answer and, and we wish there was a, an easy way to develop a budget and uh, while I wish I would have won uh, the, the Powerball jackpot and given all of that money to the city of Kingston, um, um, I didn't. Um, and, but I, I think that tonight is an opportunity for us uh, to, to hopefully at least be able to provide feedback and thoughts. And so um, I'll start over here. Um, we actually have our, our general government table um, is the first table. And um, I'll try to pull out the staff that's here. Um, hopefully I won't miss anyone. Um, Ralph Swenson, our city engineer. Uh, Dee Sills, our deputy comptroller. Uh, Kyle McIntosh, our, our director of uh, information technology. Uh, John Tuey, our city comptroller. Um, Sue Cahill, um, our planning director, um, and I think that that is it from general government. Oh, Brenna Robinson. Hi, Brenna. Um, from general government um, are all going to be um, around over at the general government table. So I would encourage you to stop by the table. There's lots of folks to talk to, um, obviously, um, from here in City Hall uh, that hopefully will be able to, to really get some good feedback. Um, going further back, um, we have the Department of Public Works, uh, and so that table is going to be represented by Mary Jo Wiltshire, um, our Finance and Operations Director in the Public Works Department, Alan Winchell, um, our uh, Treatment Plant Operator, and Bob Caccio, also a Treatment Plant Operator. And so I um, encourage you to uh, speak to those folks, uh, learn about um, what the Department of Public Works does and, and, and their budgets, and, and ask lots of questions. Um, in the middle of the room, uh, we have the Kingston Police Department. Um, we've got a whole bunch back there. Um, we have our chief, uh, Chief Tinty, uh, our deputy chief, John Wallace, um, and our lieutenant, Michael Bonds, um, in the back. Um, over uh, next to that, um, we have kind of an interdisciplinary table um, because it kind of cross cuts across all of our departments, um, but um, we have our sustainability table, our environmental sustainability table. Um, currently, we've got over there Julie Noble, our director of um, of sustainability and so please feel free to stop by and, and, and say hello and again um, in the far back corner um, we have our uh, Department of Parks and Recreation. Uh, Kevin Gilfeather is here, the superintendent of the Parks and Recreation Department and so uh, Parks and Rec um, over in the back corner um, and then uh, last but not least um, we have the Kingston Fire Department and Mark Brown um, Fire Chief um, is here tonight and so I would encourage you to um, Break up in a moment, um, go and visit those tables. Uh, you don't have to stay at the table that you first go to. Um, we want you to just mingle around, um, be able to uh, stop. Um, we'll do this for a while and then we'll, we'll probably come back together. Um, and so uh, enjoy, um, please ask lots of questions and uh, please also try to leave as much feedback as you can. Um, there will be one person at each table taking notes um, about what's uh, talked about and we'll all go into helping my budget process as we go over the next couple of weeks. So, okay, all right, thank you all very much. Five years out. 
know, at, at the litigation on the sludge is, is settled. Right. You know, what are we looking at? at, you know, at well, after that, if, depending on if we win or if we lose that, what do we do with it? We obviously, the mayor doesn't want to keep taking it to a landfill, so we're looking to compost it. How big a front yard is that? Sorry. <laughs> How big of a front yard do you have? Yeah. Nobody can tell because all the sunflowers in front of it. <laughs> well, that's what keeps the plants. That'll help them to grow. Yeah. The idea that we have one raising the seed and putting it in the 